What is going on everyone, my name is Andy and welcome to another FPL video and this time we're talking Game Week 21 preview. Uh, have a quick look back at Game Week 20 as normal and then a uh, look ahead to Game Week 21. Um, as with anything over this festive period, the fixtures are coming thick and fast. So we've got to get this video out as soon as possible. So I'm recording it straight after the Man United game. Um, 2018 games are finished now. Next deadline will be New Year's Day at 11.30 a.m. UK time. So no more games in 2018. We're looking ahead to 2019. So let's kick this video off by taking a look at my points for Game Week 20. Um, so I've come away with 60. Luckily, because I can do a little bit of maths and because of the live rank FPL tool, um, I know my overall rank, or, or pretty accurate anyway, um, but the screenshot doesn't have Pogba's three bonus points, so Pogba's actually going to finish on 18 points, which is what we're going to talk about first. Um, just incredible, bought him in for Sterling, was a little bit worried about the damage Sterling would do, um, and obviously the fact that Sané got benched and Sterling played was really frustrating. I think those that kept Sterling probably a little bit unlucky to not get more points. Um, I think on another day he comes away with more against Southampton. So just the assist and one bonus point, which is, is okay, six points. But to take him out and get Pogba in um, and get 18 points is insane, um, which also let me bring Kane in and captain him. So I think I talked about that in the last video, but that's what I ended up doing last minute. Um, was to bring Kane into captain because I just didn't really want to captain Pogba. Obviously, that was wrong. Um, and luckily, it meant I didn't captain Hazard, Sané, and Felipe Anderson because they all blanked. Um, and Aubameyang, I didn't expect to get anything against Liverpool. And as I'm sure you've seen on Twitter, if you if you use Twitter a lot, um, he got hardly any touches, Aubameyang, in that whole game. So no points there. Uh, but yeah, we'll talk more about options to bring in, whether the Pogba needs to be uh, to come in, whether he's essential or whatever in the next uh, in the preview. But yeah, Pogba amazing. Um, Wolves continue to delight. So Doherty got an assist. Um, Jimenez um, got his goal. Maybe a little bit fortunate, but um, you know you got you got to shoot to score, and, and that's what he did. Um, and you know a few people were saying, would you not bench him for Kamara? And obviously that would have gone really horrible because. Kamara won a penalty and then missed it. Um, came away with minus one for his game. But uh, uh, Jimenez is just... He's one part of my front seven of attackers. I'll never bench him unless he gets injured. Um, at that point, I'll probably sell him anyway. So really happy with Wolves again. Um, Spurs looked really poor. We'll get, again, we'll talk about that in a minute. Not, not a good uh, match for Spurs at all. Completely got it wrong about Salah. Obviously, three weeks ago, I sold him. Wasn't expecting to get punished this much where he scored 36 points in the next three. Two penalties, I think, as well. At least a penalty in the last match. It was a bit frustrating. But people were looking at captaining him against Arsenal. I was dead against it. I said that even if I owned him, I wouldn't captain him. And I wouldn't have, for sure. I would have probably gone with uh, someone else in my team, whoever that might have been. Um, probably wouldn't have had Kane if I had Salah because of the money. But, yeah, got it wrong about Salah. Another another good return there. And he looks absolutely essential to me after after the Man City game. I'm going to stick to my guns and not get him uh, for the Man City game. But after that, don't really see any any reason not to bring him in. Man City frustration, mainly for Sané owners. And, obviously, anyone that owns the uh, Edison or one of the defenders. I mean, they're just not keeping clean sheets. They're not worth the money. I think I said that in the previous stream video or whenever it might have been. Just they're time to offload them. They're just not... Um, for their price, they're just not getting enough points at this point. And uh, yes, you might have other fires to put out, but at some point, I think, take the money out of uh, Man City defence um, or goalkeeper and, and invest it elsewhere. Um, Kane a little bit lucky. I think he only had one shot, none inside the box. It was a bit of a long ranger for the goal, which was nice. But other than that, extremely poor. So I feel quite fortunate to have got his points. Annoying that he got the yellow card because he probably would have come away with maximum bonus or close to uh, maximum bonus. In the end, he only got one bonus point. Uh, and the yellow card brought him down to six. So it was really poor returns. But compared to how the rest of my team did, I was never going to captain Jimenez. And sure, Pogba got 18 points would have been nice. But I wouldn't have captained him. So happy enough with Kane. Um, but he's probably going to be go uh, in my team for a short amount of time. So probably going to go soon. And then I had to mention Button. So I had Button because I knew that Ryan would go off to the Asia Cup. And I could just have Button as my set and forget. But three weeks ago, I decided to get Fabianski. So I didn't have to play him. Fabianski does nothing after getting loads of saves and, and, and points for everyone while he wasn't in my team. And then Button cleans up on the uh, on the bench with nine points, which is just ridiculous. But it's good that he is the backup keeper for Brighton and now the number one while Ryan's away. Because it means I've got options week to week. If I do want to play him, um, then I've got the option to. But I had to mention him just for him laugh and on my bench. So game week 20, pretty good. 60 points up to 45k now. So... I fell 40,000 when I sold Salah and Son. I've clawed back 20,000 in two weeks already. So the push for a top 10k finish is still on or even higher. Um, and we'll talk about how we're going to do that in game week 21. 
So we'll tackle some of your questions before I talk about my plans for uh, the next week. Obviously, asked on Twitter, key talking points and questions. So this is what you guys have come up with. Um, so first of all, is kind of what to do about Spurs assets because they look really poor against Wolves. And I think first of all, you've got to give great credit to Wolves. They kind of they never gave up when they went one 0 down. And in the second half, when they got clawed it back to one all. Um, they just kept going for it. They were trying to get that win. They had more energy, desire, whatever you want to call it, whatever it was. They had more than Spurs did. Um, and, and throughout the second half, they looked like the team that was going to win it. So Spurs were poor, but Wolves were very good too. Um, I think I've put fatigue in brackets there because we have to remember at Christmas, there is a lot of games in a row. Um, you don't get necessarily much rest time. Spurs didn't get that much rest. Um, like a lot of teams, West Ham as well. Um, lost to Burnley, weren't necessarily expecting that, or at least in the manner that it happened 2 0, you would have thought that West Ham had scored. But again, I think West Ham had two back to back away fixtures um, in a short space of time. So fatigue's obviously a factor. I don't think we should start panicking on players based on the fixtures just gone. Um, Spurs obviously looked very, very good before that. People were suddenly talking about them being title um, challengers, that their players were essential and stuff like that. So I won't worry too much, but obviously Sun has only got two more games now before he goes to the Asia Cup, so you're not going to be looking at bringing him in. Um, Ali and Eriksson could be okay options, but again, I just think the likes of Pogba, if you're keeping your man in City assets, Felipe Anderson, um, look very good, so it's hard to fit them in. <clears throat> And then Kane's very expensive, and um, while I've got him, it is probably going to be a short-term move for me. So definitely wouldn't panic. It's Cardiff up next. Why would you get rid of him for that? I think this time of the season, when there is so many fixtures, and we talked about it before, about being aggressive. For me, it's not necessarily the time to try and be aggressive, because um, these weird results do get thrown up because of the rest periods. Um, and there is rotation and stuff out there. We probably haven't seen as much rotation as we we all talk about, uh, which happens every single year. But if you've got a free transfer to use, for sure, go for it. But I wouldn't be taking too many hits at this particular point. So don't worry too much about Spurs right now. Um, is Pogba essential? So I, I need to talk about Man United for a bit. Um, obviously, since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has come in, um, three wins, look more attacking. I didn't get to watch the first two games over Christmas. I've already spoken about that on other videos. Just didn't get to watch much football. But I did get to watch the game against Bournemouth, and it's very clear um, from the eye test that they are more attacking. And you'll see that the front three of Martial, Rashford and Lingard, they're always ready to make runs, or they are making runs. Um, and the likes of Matic and Pogba are looking for them quicker. So when they do break or when they get a chance to attack, they're already going for it rather than the slow build-up play that you saw in the Mourinho, um, which is obviously, it makes the defence have something to think about, which causes them more problems, but also gives space as well for the likes of Rashford running wide, not necessarily staying central. Um, and Pogba, I, the reason I liked him so much today was just how quickly he got forward in a lot of our attacks. So he may have started them off from the centre of midfield, um, or someone else might start him off, and he absolutely bummed it forward. That's the first and the second goal. Um, they weren't long ranges or anything. The first goal was great from Rashford, and then Pogba slides in, and then on the second one, he bombed it forward to get in that box, and when the cross came in, he was the closest to the goalkeeper and just got ahead of him. So it's really encouraging to see Pogba getting that far forward. And I think one thing we said about Man United players when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer come in is they are really nicely priced. So Pogba's like £8 million. You'd expect his price to go up in the next couple of game weeks. Um... But he looks a good price. He's getting assists. He's getting goals. Um, he, he hasn't necessarily been a massive goal scorer in recent years. Um, but he's obviously been told to get more forward uh, under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Um, and assists are always going to be there. And potentially could be on penalties. I'm not quite sure what the penalty situation is there at the moment. But um, as long as he gets rid of those stupid run-ups, he could be really good. So Man United players, definitely good value. I wouldn't discount the likes of Martial after... Um, obviously the game that's just gone, he did get an assist and he had to come off early because Bailly stupidly got a red card and so Martial was sacrificed for Jones. So I wouldn't write Martial off right now and he is a bit cheaper. Um, but Rashford too looked pretty good, but he came off of a groin strain. Um, in fact, pretty good is probably an understatement for Rashford. I was really impressed and I even tweeted to say I don't know how Lukaku gets back in the side. Well, I'll tell you how he gets back in the side, a groin strain for Rashford. So we'll have to get wait and see what the prognosis is there, how long he's going to be out. Um, but I'm definitely looking at Rashford as a potential cheapy option up front to replace Kane. Um, so yeah, really impressed with Man United. Is Pogba essential? I, I don't like giving the essential tag to too many players. Um, and I'd have to say Pogba not essential. Newcastle away, but then it's the Spurs game. Um, and that's going to be the real test of Man United's... Uh, you know, newfound play under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and the, the attacking play that they've kind of gone for now and obviously it's attack 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 they're not 
I certainly wouldn't be going for Man United defenders. Looked still a bit a uh, bit dodgy at the back and obviously conceded again. But going forward, Pogba looks a very good option for eight million. If you've got the likes of Sané or Sterling, who we'll talk about soon, then. Um, maybe that's an easy swap to make. So very impressed with Man United. Eye test definitely passed. Um, quick note about Aguero and Heaton. They're obviously both back. Um, we already kind of knew of Aguero. But Heaton played today. Now, I tried to look for a bit of news about why this was. Was Hart carrying a knock or something? Did they just fancy giving Heaton a game? But as a lot of people pointed out to me, it could just be that Burnley have been rubbish and Heaton's a very good goalkeeper. And so maybe they've just made that switch. And he comes in, they get a 2-0 win, clean sheet. Um, and he's definitely one to keep an eye on because Burnley's fixtures are pretty good. He's 4.8 million. Um, and basically before, when Heaton or even Nick Pope have been in that Burnley side, they've almost been essential goalkeepers. Now, Fabianski's getting a bit frustrating for me. I've only had him in a short amount of time and he's not done anything. But I'm not losing hope just yet with Brighton up next. Um, but Heaton definitely one to keep an eye on because, like I say, he's been... Close to essential because of his price tag and how good he is in that Burnley net. Um, obviously, Burnley have not done enough so far this season to show us that uh, he can become essential. And Hart may start the next game, but definitely one to keep an eye on. And I uh, just wanted to note that he was back. What to do with Sterling and Sterling? I mean, look, I offloaded this Sterling last week, um, knowing that he could punish me, but also that they had Liverpool this week. I'm not expecting too much from that game. I think it'd be quite a cagey affair. Obviously, Man, Man City really need the win to stop... Um, to stop Liverpool's kind of, uh, the points gap basically, to stop that or to slow it down. Uh, but at the same time, they obviously don't want to lose. So I think that's going to be quite a cagey one. Um, both teams like to attack, but we saw, I think they drew 0-0 earlier in the season and we could see something similar again. Um, so I'm not expecting too much from Sané, but I'm probably going to keep him. I think ultimately, <laughs> you've got the same problem with Man City players you've had all year, is they're being rotated. Now, we are in a period of, of potential rotation because of the amount of games... Um, that there have been so as we get further on in the season there's only like a game every week or there's just the normal Champions League games we might not see as much rotation but obviously Sterling's got Mahrez to compete with um, and as shown today Sterling can play left and Sani can get a break too so you've got to take the difference between now and a month ago is that they were getting benched but still getting lots of points when they played the thing is now is they're not getting loads of points um and they're being benched still so it, it's harder to take they did win 3-1 today against Southampton I don't expect them to now go on any kind of loser streak even though they lost those those couple of games but Liverpool's going to be a tough game but after that they've got pretty nice fixtures so I wouldn't be in a rush to get rid of them I don't think there's any players this week that you absolutely have to get sure you could get Sally to Pogba could be a nice option for this week but then Pogba has that Spurs game which is going to be tough um, whereas I think Man City have Huddersfield or someone like that um, so I don't know if they're an absolute must sell right now but obviously they are not providing value for money and I don't know if you'd trust them enough to captain them right now and especially at Sterling's price that's one of the reasons I got rid of him because I'm now not happy to captain him and that's a lot of money tied up so for me um, Sani is probably depending on the way I go with my, my plan Sani could be a make weight to get Salah back in which case I'll have no Man City players um, but as I mentioned Aguero now back played I expect him to get most of the minutes going forward um, and he could be an option up front. So you could potentially go without midfielders and go back to Aguero. Um, but obviously you've still got potential rotation there with Jesus. So Man City is a really tough one right now. I'm not really up for doubling or tripling on their players. And I don't think you need defenders from their team. Um, but again, I also don't think they're a must-sell just because of one game against Liverpool. Uh, people talking about bringing Salah in now. I've already spoken in the review part that I obviously got it wrong with him. I'm still going to stick to my guns. And not bring him in away to Man City. I think that will be a tough game for him. If he comes away with something, fair enough. But um, I think even Salah owners would agree they're probably not expecting too much. And definitely not going to captain him. So I don't feel the need to make one or two changes to bring him in this week. Um, and that will kind of be my opinion, my advice, whatever you want to call it. Um, let me know in the comments below if you disagree. But for me, if you've not got him, you can wait one more week. And I think the beauty of this week is if you've got similar players to what I've got now, they've got really nice fixtures this week. So... My idea is to save a transfer this week and then have two free transfers to deal with the Salah problem um, after the after the FA Cup break. Plus, um, having two free transfers going into to a kind of two week break is always nice, especially if there's any injuries in the FA Cup. So, um, Salah in not not now for me, but definitely definitely after the Man City game because he's back to his best. Uh, I mean, he's been consistent all season, but he's getting the double figure hauls now. Um, and the fixtures for Liverpool are great. It's not just Salah. I want Robertson and maybe Trent and even Mane as well, potentially, um, after that Man City game. Fixtures look really good for Liverpool. Obviously, they're going for the title. 
Um, and he's he's probably going to be set and forget captain, although I did say that about Sterling a few weeks ago, and look how that backfired. Is Alonso still essential? I, I don't even know why I put this in. I, I'm, I, we shouldn't even really still be talking about Alonso. Is he still essential? Absolutely not. Hasn't been for a while. Um, will I have him again this week? Yes, just because I don't need to get rid of him for the money. That might change the week after. But Southampton at home, why would I get rid of him? David Luiz looks a great option. Had a few attacking returns now. Um, really great assist for the Kante goal, by the way. Such a nice ball from a centre-back. Um, but we know he can do that. And, you know, I'm not expecting that every week, of course. But I just think for a million less for clean sheets, you might as well go for David Luiz at the moment. Um, Alonso just not providing the attacking returns. Didn't look that attacking today, although he has hit the woodwork in the last couple of weeks. But for me, absolutely not essential. Hasn't been for weeks. Um, is he one that you absolutely have to get rid of? Definitely not either. I think the fixtures are still pretty good for Chelsea, especially this week, so I would probably keep him. Um, if you need the money to fund a different move, then uh, I would probably look at getting rid. Captain this week, there's loads of options. Like I say, plenty of teams have got good good fixtures. Um, the one that I don't have is Aubameyang versus Fulham, and obviously Arsenal absolutely spanked by Liverpool 5-1 which is incredible um, but it is Fulham up next you'd expect them to try and bounce back I expect Aubameyang to start again so he looks a really good uh, really good buy there um, or a really good captain option um, Felipe Anderson versus Brighton now again I spoke about fatigue obviously they didn't do very well against um, Burnley but they are back now on home soil um, Brighton do concede quite a few shots as well um, so I would look at Felipe Anderson as an outside punt although I don't know if I fully trust West Ham just yet um, obviously, Arnautovic is back as well, so I don't know how that's going to affect um, how Felipe Anderson's output. Maybe Arnautovic will now become the main man when it comes to scoring points. Um, should have really mentioned Arnautovic is back when it comes to Heat and Aguero as well. Um, <clears throat> you got Spurs versus Cardiff, but I, I know what Sun owners will be thinking. Will he be rested? And um, I'm not sure he will because you've got the FA Cup uh, break coming up, and if they wanted to rest players, they could do it there. Um, so I think Sun will probably play. Um, so I, I think two clean sheets in the last two games for Cardiff, but they've had to work fairly hard for them. I, I think I think this is a game that Spurs will bounce back in. Kane, I, I just I think if you've got the likes of Hazard in your team, I just don't feel like I can captain Kane. I just too much risk there. He plays too deep. He's not getting into the box enough. Not having enough shots in the box. And I'm not sure if that's going to change against Cardiff that much, especially if the likes of Lucas Moura um, and Son play again, because you'd imagine they'll be bombing forward. So Kane and Son options against Cardiff. Son still the better one, I think, if you're happy enough that he's going to play. But Kane, I, I just can't do it this week. So Hazard is the one I'm really looking at. Southampton, new manager in, con still conceded eight in the last four games. Um, he's barely blanked this season as well. He's obviously on penalties and stuff. And he can cause problems from the left um, or centrally. And he didn't play centrally this week. Um, and probably won't next week if Pedro is out. But... Um, either way, from the left or, or central, I think Hazard can do it. So for me, for my team, Hazard's probably the one I'm going to go for. Um, you've got Pogba versus Newcastle. Um, and Newcastle have been doing okay at home, although I did check on Fantasy Football Scout the shots in the box. And they've conceded the, the second highest, I think it was, at home. Um, so although they've done fairly well defensively, I think there is a chance there for Pogba to get in the box uh, and score. Um, but I do worry it's a bit... It's, a bit of chasing lost points obviously he's done so well will he carry on against Newcastle he looks good and I think he's a good transfer in, but I'm not sure about captain so for me the standout is probably Hazard or Aubameyang um, we'll see how that goes I'm going to discount Liverpool and uh, Man City players because they're playing each other and I think that could be a tight game Felipe Anderson is an outside bet but for me the kind of safe captain um, probably Hazard and then my plans this week I've already kind of mentioned it I'm probably going to save a free transfer I don't feel like I need to get Salah in this week Kind of longer term thinking would be Kane out, um, Kane out for uh, a cheap striker, maybe Arnautovic, Wilson, um, Rashford. I mean, there's lots to consider there. I don't need to worry about it this week. Um, and then I can I can afford Salah even in for someone like Richarlison and leave Sane in. Um, but I think ultimately what I'll probably do is fund the move through Sane to Salah. Uh, and maybe drop Alonso to someone cheaper. And that would give me um, a pretty decent front seven plus a decent enough defence. The other option is to drop Kane to someone like Aguero or Lukaku. And that would also give me enough money to do Sané um, to Salah and keep Alonso. And also keep the kind of structure of having one premium striker. Now, I know Lukaku is a bit of a dodgy pick potentially. And if I do it the week after game week 21, then he's playing Spurs. 
if Rashford's going to be out, um, he he probably play. But I do think this this team looks better with Rashford up front. So not sure about that. But yeah, basically my plan is to um, hold my transfer this week. I think the team looks good. I think it'd be good to have two free transfers going into the next game week. Uh, and captain probably has it. I don't suspect that will change too much, but we'll see. I can always be tempted to go for someone else. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. If you did, hit the like button. It would be much appreciated. And subscribe if you're new around here. Let me know in the comments below anything that you agree, disagree with about what I've said and any questions you have going into the next game week. Um, I'll be streaming um, tonight. Actually, this, this video will go up on the 30th of December. I'll be streaming tonight between 9 and half 9. So if you get to watch it before then, get ready for the stream as well. If you watch it afterwards, then all good as well. Um, but I'll leave it there. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers all.